My take on the whole, you know, what is the indie community, it's people who grew up, you know, being creative and are trying to find a way to um, incorporate that into their grown-up lives. I guess when I make crafts, they're really lighthearted. I think crafts should be really positive. They should make people laugh. I don't have any like set patterns, so everything's kind of one of a kind. I just kind of go with what I know it should look like, and, and I just cut them out, and I don't have any help right now. <laughs> I would like to eventually have somebody to help like with packing orders, maybe like printing out the emails and even cutting. But I'd always like to do all the sewing, like the actual construction of it myself. If you're taking the time to make something, it seems like it seems natural to want to take the time to really make it well and like from beginning to end. With the rise of like the indie craft kind of burgeoning community, it seems to be all about context, whereas like my books wouldn't sell that great next to like you know, batik silk scarves, but if there's like a batik silk scarf with a skull on it next to me, I sell much better. A craft fair is more than just showing up and buying stuff. It's just like a way to support different communities. It's a way to meet people and it's a way to like support individual artists, but it's more than just a shopping experience. A lot of craft fairs now have DIY tables where you can make your own piece to bring home. And I just think that is such an amazing development. It's nothing I ever would have imagined a couple years ago. It gets easier every year as far as um, I'm, I'm not asked why my prices are so high and, or why there's only a limited amount of things or why I used reused material. You know, it feels like the, it kind of feels like the world has come around to our way of thinking. My first calendar was, you know, I went to Kinko's, copied off a hundred and then just, sold those, copied another hundred, sold those. Now, like the calendar, I print 12,000 this year, and next year I'm gonna to have to print 15, 16,000. We all share printmaking facilities and a ballroom space, it's kind of a chameleon room, film animation studio, a computer room, and a band room, and a fabric textile dye station room, and we all have our own studios as well. We're continuously building and improving our facilities so we can continue to make challenging art and uh, radical actions. We have been blown away by the way people have responded to it and the craft mafias that um, you know started forming all around the country. We stipulate that they affiliate with us, um, not because we want to uh, make money off them or not because we want to dictate what they do, but because that way we can link back to them on our website. So if you go to craftmafia.com, all the craft mafias are there. So that's the basis of all the craft mafias is that they're all interlinked. So if one craft mafia gets mentioned, they go to craft mafia and all of them are there on the website. So many people could relate to it on a personal level because they used to make hook rugs themselves. We are taking back um, craftiness from our, what we remember I think as kids. Because all my mom's dresses were handmade when she was a kid. My grandmother sewed all of her clothing. I like to make the big things and I like to make you know, tough things and strong things. This, this sort of pattern that I'm doing right now, this type of bead, can be found in museums. Uh, there can be, uh, you can find examples of this kind of bead in museums that are two or three thousand years old. It's a very traditional craft, you know, crocheting and mosaicing are very old, but I like to take a new twist on it, you know, add the cats, add the skulls, so it is not just like the same old stuff that you saw in your grandma's house. It's brand new, it's fresh, and it's, it's like cool. I grew up going to thrift stores when I was a child, so from early on I learned how to alter clothing and it's just continued uh, 
through my whole life. And um, so a lot of the clothes that I make is inspired by that. So I've always gone to flea market since I was a kid and had jewelry and collected jewelry and torn out jewelry and made new jewelry. So it's just kind of a perfect fit and that's what I do full time is tear up old jewelry and remake it into new stuff and scavenge the land for vintage beads. All my purses and rugs are crocheted from recycled fabrics. I like the idea that it's recycled and that um, it's cheap. <laughs> We're not specifically people that were crafters that did stuff, but we definitely, we definitely like, could identify that we liked that a lot more than the manufactured stuff that we looked at. So it was more just like it felt like this is a natural fit because we like it. We both made zines, so like from that self-publishing background, like we had an appreciation for kind of DIY stuff. I see a lot of similarity between the arts and crafts community and, and the indie record and music community, and there's a lot of overlap too. We'd make these polar fleece mittens for Kicking Giant because like, everybody had t-shirts for their bands, but who had mittens for their bands? Nobody. And so I just kept making these mittens and ended up making them for K-Records. Bike punks. Amazing bike jewelry that she's made. <laughs> yeah. I think the, the, the movement towards doing things yourself, I think it, even if it is a popular movement that everyone is doing, I think it's great. People are loving doing things themselves and learning how to do a craft and actually uh, get the Hello. satisfaction and enjoyment from actually making something themselves. And there are more and more resources for people to learn those types of things as the community grows, you know. This whole design will look like this when it's finished. This is the latch hook. It's a hook. It has a latch. If people approach me and they're excited about something that I make, I tell them that they can do it themselves also, and I can show them how if they want to learn, or they can order a kit in the mail, but that just to remind people that they can do anything, that everything is possible.